one. A one, two, three, four. If you're gonna go out on two wheels, put on your helmet, get good shoes, check your brakes, oil your chain, pump up your tires, wear bright clothes, look out for walkers, bring a good lock, drink lots of water, and, and have, have a ton of fun. fun. Woo! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Bike Life, where we talk to people about their bikes and their lives. How fast can you ride your bike? He has that Sunday night with the wild look in his eye. I'm Kai Plaskon. This week we talked to people at the Reno Bike Project on Grove Street about riding in Iran, of all places, and what that's like. Also, why people are buying bikes and fixing them. We also talked about some shady bike deals, riding around the world, and sleeping with your bike, among other things. Since this is the first episode of Bike Life, I think you should know that we also play music between interviews on this show. The music is about bikes. So, to start today, we found one song that has a really interesting video on YouTube. It's about bikes that have no riders and they band together to fight bike thieves. So that's what we're gonna start with today. Here's The Bike Song by Mark Ronson, The Business International.
That was Bike Song by Mark Ronson, the Business International. You're listening to Bike Life. We recorded this episode at the Reno Bike Project where you can go in and fix your bike with the help of a master mechanic for really cheap. The Reno Bike Project also sells bikes, and they're the licensee of this radio station, K-Wink. How about that? A a bike shop that owns a radio station. Anyway, for our first chat about bikes today, we ran into Amir. He was not too enthusiastic about talking on the radio about bikes, but he did it anyway. And he told us about biking in his home country halfway around the world. Um, what's your name? Amir. Amir? Yeah. And why haven't you ridden a bike in 10 years? Uh, I, I used to uh, ride a bike when I, I was in my home city, then, uh, which was capital of my country, Tehran. Then after that, I came here, so I'm moving. Yeah. How is riding a bike there different than here? So I think here it's easier because you have the road for bikes, but over there, it's not like that. Too many cars. Uh, it's hard, yeah, to ride the bike over there. Really? Too yeah. many too many cars? Yeah, on the street. It's a crowded city. And so not that many people ride bikes. Is it changing? Are more people riding now than they used to? Or no? Yeah, yeah. Much more people, yeah. Especially, I think, in that time, it was hard for the woman to ride the bike. But, but these days, women are riding bike more, so... More women are riding bikes. Yeah. yeah. Do you think the women riding bikes are attractive? <laughs> yeah. For me, no, <laughs> but maybe no? for some <laughs> Islamic people, they found it attra- attractive. That's why they, they think they shouldn't ride the bike. <laughs> yeah. I came here fa- fall 2017. Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting my PhD at UNR. Oh, in yeah. what? what do you- mechanical engineering. Oh, so do you think that you can fix a bike on your own? Uh, I, when I was a child, yeah. So sometimes uh, I should have changed the tires, yeah, those things. But right now, I think I forgot everything. <laughs> yeah. But as a mechanical engineer, I think you could figure it out, right? Yeah, uh, basically, I, I got my master and bachelor in material science, then I changed my major for my PhD. Uh, I studied mechanical properties of metals they use on the bike, like aluminum, titanium, those things, yeah. So, so are there any bikes here that, that uh, really appeal to you? <laughs> he's cool. Yeah, yeah it's good too. Yeah, actually, I came here to bring my friend. He's gonna buy a bike, not me. Yeah. In a minute, we're gonna talk to Amir's friend who's at the Reno Bike Project to buy a bike. Let's take a musical interlude. Here's Bicycle Race by Queen. Bicycle, bicycle. I want to ride my bicycle. Bicycle race, bicycle race, 
said, Kane. You said, John. I said, Wayne. I said, call a man. I don't want to be the president of America. You said, smile. I said, cheese. Johnny, eh? I said, please. Think I'm tired. I said, Jesus, I don't want to be a candidate for Vietnam. I want to gain. Because all I want to do is us. That was Bicycle Race by Queen. You're listening to Bike Life, where we talk to people about their bikes and their lives. We just talked to Amir about his bike life in Iran. Then we found out why he was really at the Reno Bike Project. Let's pick up where we left off. Yeah, actually I came here to bring my friend. He's gonna buy bikes, not me, yeah. But he doesn't want to talk about bikes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you want to talk about bikes? Now I have to talk about bikes. <laughs> I've convinced you. Oh, good. Yes. Okay, yes. What's your name? My name is Tulani. Tu- Tulani. Tulani, yes. Tulani. I'm yes. Kai. Nice to meet good you. To, good to meet you, too. So you're checking out one out right now. Yeah, I'm looking for a road bike, but with uh, normal pedals, because I'm looking to ride just to the university and around the parks. Uh, normal pedals. Normal pedals, uh-huh. not the fancy ones. Not special ones. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. So when was the last time you rode a bike? Um, 18, 2018 is for it. Yeah, 2018. So you want to ride up to the university? Yeah, I live on campus, but I mean, it takes like 15 minutes to walk. But I want to be able to not carry my food. <laughs> I just go for lunch and take five minutes and I'll be back again. Oh, you want to ride to go get your food? Yeah, for lunch. But also, I think, you know, uh, I don't have a car, so it's very easy with the bikes to be able to go to parks and stuff. You don't have a car? Yeah. And when, when did you not start, or start not having a car? I've never had a car. I've had my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so it's him, he's like, you've got to get a bike. And he drove you over here because yes. <laughs> you need a bike. Yeah. Yes. I think you have to buy a bike unless we can knock on the light. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you've been, you haven't been riding, you've just been walking everywhere or, or, t- or Amid's been taking you places? Amid has been taking me to places. If it's close by, I walk. Oh, I run. I like running too. So. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. you, you run. He's yeah. a marathon champion. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, where do you want to go when you get your bike? Um, well, I have a friend who rides quite frequently, and he does maybe 30 k's or so on weekends. But I don't want to get that far. I just want to be able to go to parks and maybe join them for the first 10 k or something like this. Um, but really, it's for getting around to like different parks and whatnot and explore, get to explore, Reno. You because know? I now, if he's not here, then I can go. <laughs> uh-huh. And so. You need a bike too. You got to get rid of your car. You you probably yeah, could have got yeah. rid of your car, and then that would have yeah. been a good excuse for <laughs> yeah. him to get to get a bike too, right? And also, I'm, I'm getting fat. I need to do riding. That's why he's a marathon. Yeah, yeah. Runner, and you're uh, yeah. still driving a car. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting fat. Maybe. See what the car did to you? Uh, what? Do you see what the car yeah, did to you? Yeah, it's yeah. really bad. Yeah. <laughs> So if you get and a bike, bikes are expensive. Why bikes are yeah. bikes are expensive? <laughs> well, you know what? That's a really good question for Kirsten. Uh, he's over here in the in the red shirt. Let's go ask him. Come on. Hey, Kirsten. Yeah. Uh, he's got a question for you. Yes. Why are bikes so expensive here? <laughs> um. Well, actually, our bikes are quite a bit cheaper than all the other stores. Unfortunately, bike prices have gone up and up and up, and even just in the last year um, a given bike has gone up almost 25 percent so i think if you do your shopping you'll find that the prices here are very reasonable i see yeah they've gone up a lot because people are trying to get out riding in covid like like bikes were impossible to find for a little while like you couldn't even put one on the internet because it'd be gone instantly Instantly. yeah yeah. this giant this giant yeah (laughs) Yeah, so it's $400. Um, it's an Ultegra bike with uh, aluminum frame and carbon fiber fork. That was probably originally about a $2,000 bike. See, that's not expensive, huh? Right. Well, what? <laughs> <laughs> if you put it that way, then uh, of course I have to buy it. Yes. <laughs> it sounds, uh, sounds good. And uh, what is the shelf life? So if I go back, go away and come back, 
tomorrow or two days to still be there or? The more expensive the bike, the longer it's here. And why are the wheels different sizes on this bike, on this Nishiki? I think there's a variety of reasons. One of them was that um, there was the idea that smaller wheels could accelerate faster. Um, also, the smaller front wheel puts the bike at a, such an angle that allows the, you to achieve a more aerodynamic position. Funny story, or maybe sad story. Uh, I was going to a Korea fair, and then I forgot to do that on my nice pants. Rolled up your pants, you forgot yeah. to roll up your pants. And, and then I got into the bike, trying to run into a Korea fair, and then they ripped. Oh no, you had ripped pants in the career fair? Did you get a job? Yeah, I had, no. <laughs> so the, the lesson is roll up your pants before yeah, you go to the yeah, career fair yeah. if you're going to ride your bike. Because yeah. otherwise your pants will get caught in the chain and uh, tear off and then you won't get a job. Precisely. <laughs> so now you remember to do that every yeah. single time, even if you're not going to go get your a take job. It yeah, take it outside. Let's lower the saddle maybe. A little bit, yeah. It looks you can roll it backwards if you want. There you go. Our next chat will be about romantic partners inviting bikes into their lives. Before we get to that, and here is Bicycle Song by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Here she comes in a suit and tie, shepherd's bush and a leopard's pie. She's marching to the funky feet of James Brown and his dancing feet. I'm gonna set your fish on fire This the whipping of desire So please do not resist your fate I'll pick you up Yes, it's a day How could I forget to mention A bicycle is a good invention Sitting there in a silent movie Beside the only girl who really ever knew me Happy days but sad of facing Heaven knows I'm on the case Oh, how could I forget to mention the bicycle? Somebody told the world The beauty of your birth My girl, I heard it first The beauty of your birth A lot of nerve in a lyrical case Be sure to write it in your book I promise not to look I wanna smell your sunny face A funny place but it's never a waste I'd hop this fence to make amends I hope this movie never ends How could I forget to mention The bicycle is a good invention Make it up, making you my business A funny buttercup, gotta live a forgiveness Happy days, but sad of facing Heaven knows I'm on the case So how could I forget to mention the bicycle? Somebody told the world The beauty of your birth My girl, I heard it first That was Bicycle Song by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. You're listening to Bike Life. This is tough to admit, but for many of us, uh, we have romantic relationships with our bikes. If you already have a human partner, it's important to talk to that partner about inviting a new bike into your life. And that's exactly what one guy was doing over at the Reno Bike Project. And he was thinking about bringing a bike into his life with his girlfriend to spice up their relationship a little bit. Hi. 
Kyle. I'm Kai. Hi, I'm, Ch- I'm Chad. Kai. Nice to meet Chad, you. Chad, good to yeah, meet you too. So meet who are you just talking to? I was talking to my girlfriend. Uh, and yeah. she's gonna be the one who tells you whether you can buy a bike or not. She's the one to make sure that I, uh, yeah, pretty much right now. I want to go over it with her and make sure she's okay with it. We got a lot of events and vacations coming up, so that's why I'm kind of making sure we budget everything properly. But uh, fitness right now, and after being on quarantine and lockdown. I think it's really good to get out there, come back, uh, come down and look at some bikes, explore all your options, and I think what they're doing down here by recycling is extremely important for the environment and the projects that we got going on in Reno as we rebuild our town from the pandemic. So you're, you need to make sure that you have enough money to, to get a bike or that she thinks that it's okay. It's more or less of just communicating together on something, you know? Communicate. You're not just going to buy it and tell her, hey, I bought a bike? <laughs> you know, they always communicate say, that way, right? They, they always say ask for forgiveness, you know? <laughs> but I want to make sure. You wanted to, didn't you? I, I, want, I wanted to, but I better make sure it's okay. Uh-huh. But, Did yeah. you take a picture of it and you're uh, going to? Of course, yeah. yeah. Let's go look at it. All right, let's go look. Right. At this Niner, they just got it in today. It's a really good price. It's got a lot of aftermarket parts they were saying on it so it'd be my first bike purchase in probably over 10 years so wow 10 years years. why haven't you got on a bike in 10 years just haven't (laughs) um (laughs) what do you mean you just (laughs) haven't i just haven't gotten a bike in like 10 years what happened to your last bike oh god i was in high school i don't know recycled it you, re- you recycled it? Recycled like it threw it the, in the recycle the, bin? At the dump. What? <laughs> <laughs> huh. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so it really wasn't working for you, I guess. Like yeah. there's something wrong with it, huh? I needed an upgrade, you know? After the coronavirus, you know, pandemic, put on a couple pounds, got to shed it for summer somehow, you know? But wait a minute. I want to know more about this bike 10 years ago. You don't want to talk about it, do you? I'm trying to remember exactly what it even looked like 10 years ago. I was a young boy, 18 years old, 16 years old. I think it was a mosh. Uh, original, it's probably a rare bike nowadays, but just toss it away. So, but, was there something wrong with it? Yeah, I just beat it up, had it since I was a kid, and just was ready to just get rid of it and look at new bikes. You know? Do you wish that you hadn't? No. Yeah, it's kind of like you know, getting rid of your first Charizard Pokemon card and then finding out years later it's worth like five to fifty grand. You know, you never, <laughs> you never know as you get older. So. Or maybe you would have still been riding for ten years. Yeah, maybe that's true, and it's important to get back out there. And as uh, sports injuries and football and motocross, I, you know, running is really hard on my joints. So I think riding a bike would be a little bit easier as well. So, so did you talk to anybody about uh, this setup here? Uh, a little bit. I noticed the Fox um, from you know motocross and bikes. That's really all I really know about this bike in general, and it's light. And I noticed when I stepped on it, the frame wasn't bending because of my, oh wait, 245 pounds, six one. So it held me up pretty well, and the tires were wide. So I really enjoyed that about it. What about shifting and stuff? Do you want to be able to do that? Uh, I saw the one gear, and I really like that. I've driven a fixed gear before. Uh, it's not necessarily a fixed gear, but a one-speed bike, basically, you know, similar. Um, I liked it quite a bit, and I, I think this would be good for me, for athletic-wise and my, my abilities that I have now. So, so this one's 600 bucks. What do you think your girlfriend's going to say about that? I think she's gonna say yes yeah she's a she's a lawyer so i gotta just always you know run over things with her oh uh, i think we're okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> she, she, she she always examines the back facts. Here. yeah she examines all the facts before we always proceed with something else too so she's gonna well the thing is is we probably end up have to get two bikes that's what oh. it was instead of oh. just one bike uh-huh. also there's another little twist in that story uh-huh. so you can get her this one for 275. Yeah, I gotta make sure she's five foot three, so I gotta make sure she comes down and sees. And I gotta see if she can even ride a bike. I don't know yet. She's a rollerblader, so. Oh. Yeah. Have you tried rollerblading with her? No, no, I don't think they make them my size. For, I don't think they make a size 15 rollerblades. I'd be kind of surprised, but. Uh huh. Yeah. Right on. Yeah, so you might be buying two bikes, and that's worth the wait, right? It's worth the wait. Yeah. But so hopefully this bike's still here too. So. Do you have to convince her to come down? She's in her office right now, but possibly. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, in order to get a bike for her, you're going to have to bring her down here. Does she know you want to get a bike for her? Well, not yet. That's what I was on the phone with talking about. So, <laughs> surprises, surprises. I didn't hear you mention that you wanted to get her a bike, too. Well, that's the way you got to do it. We we're going to, we we're meal prepping today. We just hired a meal prepper, and um, you got to think of something else to keep your couples fit, and bicycle is the way to go, I think, so. 
instead of joining a gym together, then we get some bicycles because we want. We've been inside, you know, a lot of this. Everyone has during this pandemic, so we want to go back out and explore. So I think bicycles would be a cool way of doing it. So you're thinking this really through. How are you going to? Uh, get her on that side like are you going to talk about how beautiful it is outside and how fast you'll go and how great it'll be together or wh what do you think you're going to do you know I'm I'd probably say because we do a lot of vacationing lately and just a lot of exploring and maybe take the, ba the bikes with us on vacation and see how take that route out instead of always having to rent a bike when we go out on vacation so be pretty nice. Oh, there's a nice. Okay, HS, huh? No, oh, well, purple, brand new. What's the price tag on it? Kirsten just brought over another bike, a purple new bike. Nice. You got any advice for him as he's thinking about uh, getting a, a bike for his girlfriend here, Kirsten? Um, you know, from what I've heard so far, uh, the strategy is fantastic. Um, I brought this over because one, it's the correct size, so that's very helpful. Um, the disc brakes are confidence inspiring, so if that's an issue, um, that's a great selling feature. But um, this purple is uh, beautiful. And sometimes that is one of the most important things to sell a bike on, um, if that's what the customer is interested in. Um, but you know, comfort, security, and something that you want to be seen on. Um, all of those things are great. And then just matching that up with the style of riding you want to do. So if it's holiday exploring, um, this is a great bike to take on your vacations. Um, really versatile, uh, whether you're on road or off road. Uh, it's, it's a great little bike. So let's think about these, this bike versus this single speed over here. How is that gonna, as far as kind of a relationship's concerned, and what was your name again? Chad. Chad, so how, how could that affect Chad's dynamic with his girlfriend if uh, she's on a multi-speed and he's on a single speed? Um, I think as long as both people are riding bikes with smiles on their faces, then it doesn't matter how diverse uh, or different that their bikes are. Um, and uh, it'll allow them to exercise together and be outside together. Uh, so yeah, the important thing is finding that bike that fits the rider. Chad, would you be worried that, that she's gonna speed ahead with all of her gears ahead of you and that you'll be left in the dust? That's the goal. I hope she speeds ahead and <laughs> rides really fast. No, I'm, no concerns. I think she'd do great for her, her abilities and going up hills. And I think it was an excellent pick that he picked out for her. So, and it's her second favorite color, so. That works out. I like it a lot. Thank you for sharing all that with me. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So you're going to bring your girlfriend in? That's why I was about ready to call right now. If you guys want to stay open another couple minutes here. Yeah. Yeah, we'll stay. Yeah, it'd be cool. Call her. Let's call her. Well, we wait for Kurt to call his girlfriend. Let's listen to Bicycle by the Jelly Dots. Riding my bicycle, riding my bicycle, riding my bicycle, riding my bicycle, so smooth. When I was nine years old, I had my bicycle. Now that I'm 31, I think it's just as fun. I got my guitar Before I had my first car I had my training wheels Bicycle made of steel So real It's a beautiful day for a ride
my bicycle Riding my bicycle Riding my bicycle Riding my bicycle Bicycle by the Jelly Dots. Well, when we left off, Kurt was calling his girlfriend to ask permission to buy a bike. She came down to the Reno Bike Project to see what kind of harebrained bicycles he was proposing to bring into their lives. It all seemed very innocent at first, but then through our discussion, we discovered that she has some shady bike deals in her past. He's drug, he's drug you down here, right, to, yeah. to uh, show you some bikes. What do you think? They're pretty nice. I didn't know that there was this out here, to be honest. The bike project? Pretty cool, yeah. So I do actually have like a lot of bikes at my house that are not being used because they're like broken or something like that. So now knowing that they repair bikes or that they could use them if I'm not using them, that would be really cool to yeah. donate. So. What's your yeah. name? Josette Omelia. Jo jo your first yeah. name is? Josette. Josette. Yeah. And so do you think you're going to bring your broken bikes down here? And yeah, we do have a lot. Like I have like, I think 10 bikes and I think honestly, we only use like half of them. You have like 10 broken bikes? Yeah. Well, we have like 10 bikes in total, but so five of them are in use. And then there's a couple others that aren't used. So, and it's because like they need like new tires or like hoses or brake lines or something like that and we just haven't had the time to fix them so now knowing that this is here I'm like oh, I might just donate my bikes <laughs> we just so in college my sister went to Boise State University and at the end of the year because she was a resident assistant at the end of the year they said if there were bikes that were attached to the like uh, chains and stuff that they would cut the chains and we could take the bikes so we gathered a lot of bikes really? who said that you that? could do that the university oh wow yeah really <laughs> yeah huh the, the universities like steal these bikes yeah they were like well we're gonna just take them so if you want to use them then you guys can use them so we wow. yeah we've gathered a couple bikes just from that. so maybe they were broken when you even took them yeah, right think, like they had a flat tire and somebody's like no broken and then we just haven't gotten around to like fixing all of them. Were you a part of this? Uh, no comment. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Is this the first that you've heard of this or did you know about this? Now I'm second guessing everything we've been through right now. No, I'm just kidding. She's, she's an honest woman. Hey, except for the bikes that you have, the stolen bikes in your garage, right? Yeah, so for the most part. Yeah, for me, I need a, a larger bike. Um, I'm, I need something that looks like a more multi-purpose bike than what I was looking at. So I'm going to do some more research um, before I make a pull the trigger, you know? So, but yeah. I think I'll be able to use some of mine still anyways. A lot of them are still in good shape. So coming down here has made you re-examine your bike life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you think of your bike life now? Well, 
I, I don't know. I like want to. <laughs> I want to start riding bikes more I mean, now. <laughs> I mean, how do you ask these questions with a straight face? That's where I'm wondering. You can't see you my can't face because I'm wearing a mask. I can't. I can't. I can't. <laughs> You're like, is he serious about this right now? Yeah. My bike life, what does that even mean? Well, I didn't even know she had a bike life. It was a whole undercover See, bike I, life she was I living. Like, yeah. to, last summer, I biked all, I, yeah, I biked all around Carson City and stuff. I think I'd go on like 15 mile rides and stuff at one time, just exploring when COVID hit because there was like nothing else to do. So I like reignited my bike thing then. And I haven't done it this year, but it's summertime, so I'm excited to try it again. You reignited your yeah. bike thing. Yeah. Wow. I woke the sleeping giant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't know I'm going to be dragging your ass around and like 15-mile rides and stuff. <laughs> Heck yeah. yeah. Awesome. Reigniting awesome. the bike yeah. life. I like that. We're going to be hanging out here weekly now. I'm excited. All the time. All yeah. the time. <laughs> Flat tires with all these bike rides we're going to be riding on. <laughs> Well, keep your tires pumped up. That uh, leads to a lot of flats, yeah. not having your tires pumped up. I think up. that's what mine, a lot of ours are. That or the, like, the tubes inside the tires are popped, so we need new tubes. <laughs> but yeah. All right, well, hope, you know, hopefully you'll bring your bikes down here. It's yeah. a lot of bikes to, you'll have to make a lot of trips. <laughs> Excellent. Well, what are you going to go do now? Go look at my bike. <laughs> really? Well, I'm gonna go home anyway, so I'm gonna go look at the said, bikes. You said, oh, bikes. <laughs> okay, she said yeah. she was gonna look at her. gonna show yeah. off bike. all of her bikes yeah, on the no, black market. You, so, no. <laughs> <laughs> you might be able to sell them. I know. Yeah, that would the be bikes nice. are in hot, like high demand right now. Yeah. I wanted to keep at least one because I'm gonna make it into a Bernie Man bike. Oh, you but, are. Yeah. What does that even mean? Well, like you know how like at Burning Man, people it gets like super dusty. So some people have just like a designated bike just for Burning Man because it gets so messed up, and then they like paint it or they like wrap it with boas and lights and stuff like that. So I'm gonna do that. <laughs> you could do that to to Chad's bike. Yeah, like I, I said, I woke the sleeping giant. I didn't know anything about this matter. It's, You're it's gonna wake up one morning and your bike's gonna be covered with like tinsel and have like streamers on it and glitter. It'll be great. <laughs> That, that, yeah. <laughs> you want to ride everywhere. Yeah. His face is otherwise. <laughs> now I'm glad we got this mask on our face. Yeah. <laughs> it's the only time I've been happy about it the whole entire oh COVID. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Did you didn't take it for a spin. Did you take it? You took it for a spin? I did. I think I'm too too large for it still. Wait, really? Wait. Yeah, for one gear, I can only go. You know, it's weird. It's weird when you're a big boy. You know, as you get stronger, it's easier to pedal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've broken three treadmills from sprinting on them before, so it's bikes. I got to be really. I got a lot of torque on my uh, calves and hips. Oh, so. so you're too strong for it. I think I'm too strong for it. Yeah. Oh wow! <laughs> All right. Very, very humble. <laughs> All right. That's my bike life. You guys want to know about my bike life? It's kind of personal, I guess. So. You reignited that calf strength. Gosh, we got Burning Man bike. We got breaking bikes down here. So you need something beefier, huh? I need something a little beefier and, and with gears. I, because when I used to ride, when I rode the fixed gear, I was about 70 pounds lighter. So. Wow. Yeah. That's a big difference. Yeah, about 185. So. Uh huh. Okay, well, it, it looks like you have a plan now. Yeah, yeah. Now I got a good foundation of uh, what to look for, and everyone was really helpful down here, so I, I appreciate that. So we got to lay it out. The bike life is like get the Burning Man bike going with the tinsel and, the, and, and painting and stuff. Make sure your tires are all pumped up. Uh, what else? I don't know. Yeah, get all those bikes I down here. Get my, evaluate my bikes and get them down here. You gotta scalp some Burning Man tickets. <laughs> Next year. So thank you very much. Thank you. It was nice really to meet you. Thank you. It's thank good you. to meet you too. You guys take Have care. A good day, you too. Guys. Hopefully we'll see you again. Yeah, for sure. Bye. -bye. Josette and her boyfriend are not alone. There are tons of broken bikes out there in the world. The Reno Bike Project is a low-cost repair spot for the public to get help fixing their broken bikes. When we come back, we're going to talk to bike owner Jim about his love affair with the really old bike he was fixing. First, the song. Here's Bike in the Head by The Knits. Bright, sunny, summer day, 
my fat bike in That was Bike in the Head by the Knits. If you have a bike, you have to fix it sometimes, right? Just like a car. But unlike a car, you can really fix your bike yourself with the help of places like the Reno Bike Project and the right tools. Tons of people use the Reno Bike Project, even seasoned cyclists. I'm Jim. Jim? Yeah. Uh And and so you brought in a a white Schwinn today, right? It's funny because you know, you hear about these Peloton exercise bikes that everybody has nowadays, you know, for the pandemic. And I like to kind of kid around people. I go, well, I have my original Peloton and that's exactly what that is. That bike is the Schwinn Peloton. And this bike was, uh, uh, it was the top of the line race bike that Schwinn had during the 80s. I bought it in 1987 when I was just just barely out of high school and it was my very first race bike. And when I got that bike, I was pretty much hooked on bike racing. How did that bike change your life? I've lived here in Reno since the 80s and when at that time when Greg LeMond, when he of course was famous for his Tour de France victory and he grew up here in Reno. So he really influenced me also in, in, uh... So now, is that your only bike, or...? Oh, no. Since then, I've, I've gotten other bikes. It's just that I've always hung on to that bike because it's kind of a, uh, It's definitely a nostalgic bike. It's got the original Columbus SLSP tubing, that Italian-style tubing that... You hardly ever see any bikes with that anymore. Let's go take a look at it. What, what was wrong with it today? I had some brake problems. So it was just the adjustments needed on the brakes, that's all. Nothing major. I did the death ride a while back and I just right when I was gonna start, the quick release somehow broke. So I had to go all the way back in Gardenville. And that's what holds the wheel on. Can you show them where the quick release is? Yeah, I know where it is. (laughs) Yeah, it's right down there. But the quick release broke. So yeah, it snapped and it broke. So I had to go all the way in Gardnerville to get 
to get another one that would fit for this one. One way to keep your bike in good shape is to tune it up before it has a major breakdown, right? When we come back, we're going to talk to another seasoned cyclist who has ridden a whole lot of places in the world. And then we're going to talk to Kirsten again, who has organized hundreds of rides. But first, here's Happy Cycling by the Boards of Canada. was happy cycling by the boards of Canada. And once you start riding and getting really good at it, sometimes it's hard to stop, right? And that's the reality of bike life. In some cases, people get really, really into their bikes, just like people do with cars. There have got to be thousands of kinds of bikes, maybe even millions, and definitely millions of modifications that you can do. Some people spend a lot of time thinking about how to improve their bikes for special riding conditions. And that's what the next guy that we talked to was doing. So what's your name, sir? Corby. Oh, just came in to look for some new tires and give my bike a quick tune-up. Why do you need new tires? Well, um, it's getting drier out. I want to do more mountain biking. And I have some old cross-country tires that the knobs are all gone on. And, well, I'm sliding everywhere. That's not good for the trail, that's not good for the riding. So I'm looking for some uh, new wheels, some new tires. Have you crashed because of it? No, but had a few scary moments. But at this point, I have several different wheel sets for it. I have a wheel set for um, bike packing, another wheel set for uh, road as well. So it's pretty easy to swap those tires and I can do whatever I want on this bike. And why do you come in here to work on it? I like working on the bikes myself. Um, they have all the tools here. Um, if I don't know how to do something, they have the expertise and they're, they can easily show me what to do. Um, they have great used parts. If I break something, I want to fix it cheap, fix it even better, I can do it here. I had an old Walmart mountain bike and I had a friend come visit me that was into mountain biking and he drug me out. And I was hooked ever since then. I beat the hell out of that walmart bike for a summer and <laughs> had to true the wheels and fix it after every ride because it just was not up to the what i needed it to do so i saved my money and i bought a another mountain bike i try to commute as much as i can by bike um my commute's six miles and now that it's getting a bit hotter in the evenings i can't do that as much yeah, pretty much every weekend I'm on the bike, uh, especially gravel riding. Uh, this whole area is wonderful gravel riding. How has it changed your life? I mean, it's just another activity that you do or what? 
Oh man, I now pretty much all my vacation is dependent on where I can go ride my bike. Um, I spent two months in New Zealand. Yeah, it's a great way to see the world. That's what I really want, I enjoy doing. So before before you were riding a bike, did you have a reason to travel, or, or did it give you a reason to travel? Or I'd say it gave me a reason to travel. So. You got started on a Walmart bike. It probably was like a hundred bucks or something like that, <laughs> yeah. right? Do you have any advice for anybody who's really just kind of thinking about getting into it? Should they go out and get a Walmart bike and deal with it that way? <laughs> um, now I don't really recommend the Walmart bikes um, because they're just not built to last. Um, yeah, you have. I spent so much time just trying to get that bike to work okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if it's all you can afford, then that's all you can afford, and it's great. But honestly, um, you can find better bikes here at the Reno Bike Project for the same price. And when you have an issue, they can teach you how to fix it if you don't know how to fix it. Saves a lot of money in the long run. It really will. Now, 100 pounds sounds like a lot, but I think Kirsten's bike weighs more than he does, right, when you go touring? Absolutely. You, you never want to be without... You, you never want to be without a bike that weighs more than you do. That's right. They, well, they make the best tent mates. <laughs> <laughs> you sleep with your bike? Oh, yeah. Keep it close. This is Kirsten and I's first interview together, and we're learning a lot about each other. Should I, do you recommend people sleep with their bikes? Absolutely. I mean, how, how else are you going to make sure your best friend knows just how important they are to you? <laughs> what do you think of what Kirsten says here? Are you thinking about sleeping with your bike now? Is, has he convinced you? <laughs> um, I wouldn't go quite that far. I have a small tent, but I'm sure he packs a bigger tent. You need a bigger tent. I guess so. I mean, or a smaller bike. <laughs> We've got some more customers. I think another customer in here. Is that is this an, another customer here? Yeah, he's going to go bike shopping, he's huh? Shopping. Yeah. So uh, you know, it's been super busy this season uh, with bike shoppers because I don't know if it's uh, you know sort of the fear of missing out. Uh, everyone started riding bikes with the pandemic, uh, but it seems to be holding over uh, as we get closer to being post-pandemic. Well, again, um, you know, if you really want your bike to understand how important it is to you, you might want to start showering with your bike. Kirsten, what kind of riding do you do? Uh, you know, I enjoy uh, touring the back roads of Nevada. And so um, whether they're um, long day rides uh, or short overnight rides or even short tours, um, that's really what I enjoy doing. And uh, you have a uh, like a Facebook page or something, right? Or a website? Um, I have a blog, uh, Bikepacking Northern Nevada. Um, it's bikepackingnv.blog. Uh, there's also a Facebook page associated with that. And then there's a group that I'm a part of um, out of Carson City called Burrito Packing NV. Um, it's, it's been a great social outlet, um, and it's allowed me to promote my rides and really meet a lot of other riders and get some new riders out there as well. And you have a, a few blogs on there, right? A few posts? Yeah, I mean, I think there's uh, getting close to a couple hundred routes um, described in the blog. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been an eight-year endeavor. Um, I'm really surprised I've stuck with it as long as I have. <laughs> Do you feel like uh, it's got a hold of you, like you can't let it go? Absolutely. When people ask me if I want to go ride in California, you know, I really have to say no because I really focus on uh, riding in Nevada. And with the time that I have, um, you know, I have to make some choices. And so I always look to the east and rarely go west. Look to the east and rarely go west. Some simple advice for your bike life to wrap up today's ride. Thanks for riding with me. I'm Kai Plaskon. Today's show was recorded at the Reno Bike Project on Grove Street. Do you have a bike life story that you want to tell? Call me. My number is 775-287-0302. I got a bike and then rode far away. I met these people along the way. They asked to join me, so I said, okay, blind to what I gained.
Bike Life is produced by the Truckee Meadows Bicycle Alliance. Donate at bikewasho.org. Here's I Never Used Training Wheels by I Am Nation.